On behalf of the Board of Education, I welcome you to the January regular meeting, the first regular meeting of calendar year 2012. Thank you for attending and for your interest in educational matters affecting the district. We really look forward to having this many folks in attendance when we have our discussion of test scores and some other educational items. Setting your cell phone on silent or vibrate is appreciated. We understand that you may be here for a particular agenda item. While we welcome your stay for the entire meeting, we recognize that you may need to leave at the conclusion of that item, and we understand that. Uh, we will be moving to the regular boardroom for part of the meeting after the public comment period. Um, at right now, we will rise for a moment of silence and a, the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. And now the pledge to the flag. Thank you. Please be seated. The first agenda item is adoption of the agenda. Does anyone have questions about or changes to the agenda? Seeing none, a motion is in order on its adoption. Motion by Ms. Fatkin. Second by Dr. Kudak. Other discussion? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. The next item is approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes for consideration. Does anyone have questions about the minutes of the December 13, 2011 regular meeting or the January 3rd, 2012 organizational meeting? A motion is in order to approve the minutes of both meetings. Motion by Dr. Kudak. Second by Ms. Wolf. Other discussion? Those in favor of approving the minutes of the December 13th, 2000 regular meeting and the January 3rd, 2012 organizational meeting say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. The next part of the agenda is the public comment period. Based on the sign-in sheet, I'm counting the number of people to address. Twenty-one people are signed, have uh, signed in to address the board. Um, no one has listed the topic. How shall that be handled, Mr. Attorney? Uh, when you come to speak, it is appropriate to indicate the topic. Uh, having received some preliminary information about possible topics uh, and assuming that some of the folks who are signed in may be addressing a personnel matter, I would like to present the board policy that governs public participation in open meetings just so that we're all clear on where we're coming from. The Board of Education policy addressing public particip participation in open meetings is 01.421. Public attendance. The public and the news media are permitted to attend all open meetings of the board. No person may be required to identify himself in order to attend any such meeting. Exception, the chair may impose conditions upon attendance at a given meeting only if such conditions are required for the maintenance of order. Public participation, the agenda for open meetings shall include an opportunity for the public to address the board. The chair shall first recognize persons wishing to address the board. Any delegation appearing before the board 
shall appoint a spokesperson to address the board. Issues presented should pertain to board business. Individuals with complaints or issues concerning a local school should exhaust all measures at the school level with the school principal and or the SBDM council before addressing the board. The board's main purpose is to establish policy for the entire district, not to settle disputes that could be resolved through other channels. The board is not involved in hiring, firing, or disciplining district personnel. Addressing personnel or confidentiality issues will not be permitted in open session. Non-agenda items. The board will not take official action on non-agenda items in the meeting at which the items are first introduced unless an issue presented in a non-agenda item is deemed an emergency by the board. Speakers. The chair may require the name and address of the speaker. The chair may rule on the relevance of the topic to the board's agenda. The chair may also establish time limits for speakers depending on the number of speakers, the length and complexity of the agenda, and as may be required to maintain order and to ensure the expedient conduct of business. A written response as appropriate shall follow within 10 working days. Personnel matters by their very nature involve confidentiality. So as the board has, will accept input and comments from the public this evening, please observe the spirit of the board policy in your remarks. The public comment period is a time for the board to receive information. It is not a time to discuss, answer questions, or to debate the matters or, or issues presented so that everyone is clear about the laws regarding school personnel actions. I shall read excerpts from the statutes that relate to this matter. KRS 160.170 is the oath that board members take. Every person elected to a board of education shall, before assuming the duties of his or her office, take the following oath in addition to a constitutional oath. Each board member being duly sworn says that he or she will not in any way influence the hiring or appointment of district employees except the hiring of the superintendent of schools or the school board attorney. KRS 160.380 related to school employees, paragraph 2, item A. All appointments, promotions, transfers of principals, supervisors, teachers, and other public school personnel shall be made only by the superintendent of schools who shall notify the board of the action taken. Considering the length of the agenda, the public comment period this evening will conclude not later than 7.15 p.m. As time permits, individuals registered to address the board will be invited to the microphone in the order in which the names appear on the sign-in sheet and may use up to two minutes for comments during that time period. Mr. Swope will keep the time and will signal when 15 seconds remain. When you come to the microphone, please speak closely. Uh, Mr. Christy may need to demonstrate, but you really need to speak as closely to the microphone as you can. The first speaker is Reverend William Kennedy. Any comments I may or may not have, I reserve the right to speak later. Thank you. If the um, time period for public comments elapses before speakers are finished, 
uh, you may not have an opportunity later. Do you understand that? Thank you. The next speaker is Brenda Lyle. I understand just like Mr. Kennedy does. Just one more. I might not have. The next speaker is Steve Graves. Thank you, Chairman Hicks. Steve Graves, GRC graduate, parent of five kids, gone through the Clark County school system, and I'll be speaking tonight on the future of education in the Clark County public school system. In the past couple weeks, we've had a lot of conversations, discussions with a lot of people over the future of our school system and recent developments, in particular into personnel issues, which I understand we cannot go into in great detail. I will just remind everyone, as you did Chairman Hicks, about some things that the board has discussed. First of all, the board goals that have adopted as the Board of Education for Clark County Board district communications, both internal and external, will reflect clarity, professionalism, improved customer service with the community and stakeholders. I think tonight we can show that a lot of the community is here, and we have a lot of stakeholders here that are uh, concerned about the education of our children in this school system. Uh, another thing, uh, if you want to quote KRS Statute 10.2, the board believes that a continuing two-way dialogue between the schools and the public is necessary. It shall be the policy of the board to give consideration to suggestions posed to, the be posed to the board by the citizens of the district, which is exactly what we are doing here today. We started by meeting with the principal of GRC High School during the site-based council meeting. Uh, we have discussed with several board members, several of you sitting at this table. You have also voiced your concerns to me and to members of this community as to the future of this public education system in Clark County, and especially in light of some of the recent developments that have taken place, especially in the opinions of this county and how we view our school system and the lack of faith and trust that we have and the decision-making capabilities that have been taken recently, especially by the superintendent of the Clark County uh, Public School System. In board relations, it says in KRS 0.11, they shall vote and act partially for the good of the district, accepting the will of the majority vote in all cases and supporting the resulting decisions. The board shall interpret school programs to the public and shall seek the opinion and advice of laypersons concerning the welfare of the students. The board shall also work cooperatively with school staff and interested citizens in a continuous effort to improve, improve the total school program. Is my time up, BJ? So um, in other words, so the reason that I am saying this, the reason I am saying this is because we have several people that will come after me. Thank you. John Atkins. John the Atkins. next speaker is Joan Graves and Colton. Okay, I got it. Are you and Colton sharing your two minutes, Joan? Okay, I am Joan Graves. I am wife and I am Colton's mother. This is it my son Colton. Colton has Asperger's syndrome. Colton was abused in our schools. Abused. Brutalized, actually. We pulled him out to save his life. We pulled him out because my son turned into someone I didn't recognize. Long before Phoebe Prince became a household name, I had Colton Graves. Clark County had Colton Graves. This is the face of autism. This is the face of what happens when you are bullied. It is also the face of victory. Do not forget it. He may look down when he sees you, but it's not in shame. He looks down so that he can focus on you. This child's life was saved by Paul Columbia. He took my son and I dropped him off at GRC on his very first day, only putting him back in public education because we had heard so much about the freshman academy at GRC. I dropped him off. He walked with his head down, and I cried the entire time, wondering if I'd made 
15 seconds. The next speaker is Brian Jones. Is Brian Jones present? Thank you. The next speaker is Reed Campbell. I'm Reed. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Coach Columbia and everything he's done. Um, I grew up, I went to the same church as he did. My brother played for four years there. I played for four years there. And I know what kind of man that, that, that he is and has always been. And I just, a few examples of him is how to treat others on and off the football field. More so off the football field. How important our educations were every day after practice. He didn't sit us off and tell us like what to do on offense or defense. He asked us what our homework was. If we already got it done or when we were gonna do it. And he made sure we did it. He also, what kind of man we were after high school. Well, who we grew up to be. He cared about all of that. And just like she said with Colton, I don't know what many coaches would do, but when he showed up, Coach Columbia made every one, 70 players, 70, individually introduce ourselves to him, shake his hand, and introduce ourselves and tell him he was a part of us. I don't know many coaches that would do that. And the man cares about every, every kid that comes through the school. It don't matter if you play football or not. He's there for you, and you, you obviously know he's there for him. And it shows. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is John Atkins. I was fortunate to get to work in the school system for 34 years. I was principal the last three years of my career. Well, I, actually the last five years I helped coach football. Three years before that I was a principal at GRC and for 18 years an assistant principal. First of all, I came here to support Coach Columbia, but after what I've gone through in the last week listening to people. I'm here about an opportunity. And I know that it is the superintendent's job to hire and fire people. But it's the Board of Education's job as well as the superintendent's job to work together for the best interest of students. And there are people here tonight either to support Coach Columbia or to defend Ms. Ferris. And these people have such an important job to play in the school district and folks we can lay blame wherever I think mistakes were made in the decision making in this process I don't see where anyone worked with coach Columbia but what has really concerned me over the last few weeks teachers have made remarks Mrs. Ferris says if a student doesn't pass your class you failed the student didn't fail you did Mrs. Ferris, if Coach Columbia didn't pass as a coach, I'm sorry you failed. Not just Coach Columbia didn't pass. And everyone has a responsibility here to work together to be in the best interest and support the personnel of this school. When I was, had been at the high school recently, I've heard so many teachers talking about, I would like to be involved, but I'm afraid if I say something, what's going to happen to me? Now, this is what we all seconds. face. So board members and superintendent, I hope that you work together to for the best interest of these people. And Coach Columbia is an outstanding person in this community. Thank you. The next speaker is Dewan Miller. Hello, everybody. 
And I happen to be on the other side, not just a GRC graduate, but I happen to be Paul Columbia's sister-in-law. Now, what we are here for is not just about the firing of Paul Columbia, but the way it was done. This wasn't about wins or losses of a football team. This was an attack on his integrity. The guy has the biggest Christian faith of anybody I know. He goes to church every Sunday, but not just that he goes to church. He lives it every single day. This was not about football. That is not why he was fired. Yeah, we, I, I get the I get the board. I get the Thank you. I actually had you for typing. I don't know if you remember that thing quite a few years ago. But, <laughs> yes, exactly. Some teachers could say Dewan, some couldn't, so I went with you Dewan. But what I am here for, and I drove all the way back to a town that I grew up in, was to right a wrong. You guys put a superintendent in place that makes a choice that's not for the betterment of the children. We've got just a few, just a few that have stated the change that Paul has made in their life. Again, this is not about the football game and the wins and losses. This was about the holistic child. He cares about everybody's mental, physical, emotional, educational well-being. He is there for every child, getting them out of the hospital, getting them out of trouble, going to court, and even bigger. He is a team player, and most of the people here are here for Paul Columbia as a team player of his team. Y'all need to read. Y'all need to write this wrong. Thank you. The next speaker is Brian Denham. GRC graduate, uh, college graduate. I played football for Paul Columbia at one point in time. I played football at the University of Kentucky. I helped coach Paul Columbia on this high school team right now. If you told me that this was about wins and losses, I would say, okay, if you're going to talk about this is more than that, then there's a big mistake. This man is a true inspiration and a true leader. Um, he makes the right decisions. I know sometimes as a coach, he makes decisions that I probably wouldn't make because I'm a little bit more rah-rah. But he goes, no, we need to give these guys a little break here. We need to do this. He takes care of these kids. And when I am guess I'm a little bit disappointed that it wasn't more of a team effort in with Coach Columbia, Mr. Bolin, and Ms. Ferris. I wish it were, hey, we need to do this. Hey, we want this to happen. How can we as a program get to that level? Now tonight, when we leave this place, this program, this school system will go on. After the school board member is gone, after the superintendent and coaches are gone. So this program will come back. I'm just worried about what's gonna happen in the end. I think this was a bad decision. I wish there was more feedback. I know my kids are going up through the school system. I love the school system. That's why we stay here and we live in this community. I'm not happy with what happened to Coach Clinton. Myself, I could care less. There will be other things for me to do. This is for Coach Clinton. And to me, it shouldn't have been done in the way that it was done. If, once again, if you talk about wins and losses, 15 seconds. I say I understand. This was not done correctly. There should have been feedback between a supervisor and an employee. And there was none. There was a meeting that said, it's not about wins and losses. It's about the holistic child Time. and your leadership. Thank you. The next speaker is Heather Penichet. Hi. My name is Heather Penichet, and I am currently the new president of the GRC Football Boosters. However, tonight I speak to you as a mother of a current player. As everyone speaks tonight regarding Coach Columbia, I will not argue that he is a wonderful man. I have a great deal of respect for him and Elaine Ferris both. However, I feel like with the recent protesting, some of the phone calls that have been made, the pressure that has been put on the children at school, we have lost sight of what is really truly important here, and that is our sons. 
And I ask tonight that maybe some of these issues can be resolved. I know that we cannot speak publicly about the exact occurrence of his firing. But I do hope that everyone will take into consideration that the boys that are currently playing football for GRC are those that are the most of importance. This has become a distraction both at school and among our children in the weightlifting program that is currently going on. So please consider this when you are speaking tonight and not make this personal or only about a coach. This is about a, a football team and the boys that want to play this fall. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Erica Patton. Thank you. The next speaker is Travis Urban. Uh, hello, my name is Travis Urban. Um, I'm a graduate from GRC. Uh, played call, I played football um, GRC for four years. Uh, I live in Ashland right now. I haven't been in Clark County for a while. I um, heard the firing of Paul Columbia. Um, and you know, as a community, I think we have a great community. I'm proud of it. I brag about from Ashland. Everybody makes fun of me, but I think Clark County is very national. Uh, but to my point is, I think the reason our community is so great is Paul Columbia. He's been a great mentor to me. Um, he's always looked out for me whenever I did play football. Um, not only that, he always looked out for my grades. You know, being in high school, I was honorary. What kid isn't? Um, I don't know you, Miss Ferris. I'm sure you're a great woman. Nothing personal about this. Uh, but he, he was a great man. He would always grab me to the side, Travis, your grades up, you're getting your homework done. Um, had two different coaches be before Coach Columbia became a uh, high school coach. Uh, I remember having seven-hour practices from a coach that was in Florida. He wasn't used to the soft stuff. Give us one drink for seven hours, Coach Columbia, sneak us drinks as much as possible. Cared about our character, made sure we were hydrated. You know, and I know it's a bigger picture than this, but as for myself, you know, I come from Ashland. This is, it's truly important to me, too, that he was a great guy. And I know it's – I hate how this is splitting our community up. I don't want it to. We, we need to work together. I just think this should have been solved in a better way personally. Um, and I just I just truly want to come down and just say I support Paul Columbia. I don't know you as a person. would love to meet you, talk to you, you know, get to know you. Um, but I think we all need to get together, work together, and uh, make the right decision, which I believe is to keep Paul Columbia. Thank you. The next speaker is Natasha Olato. Looks like O L O seven zero. Oh, thank you. I'm just here to show my uh, support for Miss uh, Ferris um, and the decisions that the board has made. Um, I just want everyone to get along and know that we're working towards everything for the best of the kids and uh, that we should have no animosity towards each other. Thank you. The next speaker is Missy Hudson. My name is Jaquetta Hudson, and my son, Henry Hudson, also went to school uh, under Coach Columbia for four years. And I'm just here to support Superintendent Elaine Ferris. And I'm not here to bash Coach Columbia. Uh, I think the school just, the football team just needs a change. And I think we need to support her, move on, and try to get to where we need to be. We, someone said that we're trying to get there. We haven't got there yet, so I think, you know, we need to move on you know Winchester is a small town and it's we just need to work together and do what's best for our kids you know 
everybody kept calling my son to get him to come and he was so afraid he didn't come but if you had this much you know dial tone as far as calling him when he was in school it would have been okay because when when I was in his senior year I was there twice if not three times a week to make sure that he got the education that he needs most of the parents and most of the, the teachers and stuff back in 2006 2005 should know me because I was there you made me uh, check in and told me I couldn't see who I wanted to see, but he was my, my child and I wanted to see him. I wanted to see what you all were doing with my child. So it's not about, you know, education too. And I think Ms. Ferris has taken us the way that we need to go. I think we need to support her, support her and quit the big room. Thank you. The next speaker is Todd Sill. Todd S E um possibly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm here this evening. I'm here this evening just to uh support Paul. Uh, I did play football in high school and college. I didn't play here, and I didn't graduate through GRC. Uh, I have been out to the field watching practices because I love the game. I love young men. I teach a men's group in the church, and uh, I like what Paul has done with those young men. Uh, if it is wins and losses like, uh, like we were talking about, you know, we've had few good years in the last six years. We've had a few down years. But if you're talking about leadership and integrity, you all have dropped the ball on communication. Because Paul is a man of leadership. He's a man of integrity. He allowed people to come in and speak on leadership. He guides those kids in and outside off the field. He's always mannerly. I just think the, the, the ball was dropped. I think you all fumbled the ball on communication with this. Just, just, just have all to, to revamp it, re-talk about it, and then your decision is your decision. Thank you. The next speaker is David Aldridge. Hello, my name is David Aldridge. Um, I'm also a former GRC graduate, and uh, I'm here on behalf didn't have the privilege of playing for Coach Columbia football, but he understood that I played another sport in high school. Um, and, and to reiterate some of the things that the people have said, um, he always made sure my grades were up. Uh, he taught me things as a student that, uh, that I didn't wouldn't have gotten from other teachers. Um, he truly cares about his kids um, that, come, that used to come through his classrooms when he taught math, and uh, I learned a great deal from him just as the students that are attending there now uh, are, are still learning. Paul is a great man of integrity. And, uh, you know, just this past summer with his football camps, um, I have a younger son myself that's 11, um, and he already looks up to Coach Columbia. Uh, just, uh, he, he was able to attend one of his uh, uh, football camps this summer, and uh, he, he talks about Coach Columbia all the time. And he was only with him for a few days. Uh, I think that speaks volumes somebody that we could look up to with Coach Columbia. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Brian Stevens. Yes, ma'am. I've been lucky enough to have three boys play for Coach Columbia. And my job in civilian life, I'm a manager, but I'm a first sergeant in Army Reserves, and I teach basic training. 17 and 18 year old boys getting ready to go overseas. Okay, I've watched the other coaches on the sidelines because I work with chains at the GRC home games. And to some of them, they're held up as a gold standard for their wins and their losses. And I've watched some of these coaches that are borderline abusive, whether it be grabbing players by the face mask or calling them names. That, that if I did that to one of my young soldiers, 
I'd be fired from that, okay? Or worse. I've watched the other team's coaches work with referees like they're, like they're some TV preacher trying to get the call. And then I contrast that to what I see out of Coach Columbia, what I saw out of Coach Columbia's staff, and the way that the encouragement that they showed. And I just feel like that Coach Columbia and his assistant coaches, I just wanted to make a statement that I felt they should be honored for the work that they've done. And that uh, no mistake is, is can't ever be taken back or no wrong can't ever be corrected. Thank you. The next speaker is Dustin Griffin. Hello, my name is Dustin Griffin. I graduated from GRC in 2005. Uh, Chairman Hicks, you and I share something. We were both uh, president of FBLA chapter at GRC and also the college version of FBLA. Uh, Kentucky State President's also in attendance today, former president. Uh, I'm, I'm here uh, to support Coach Columbia, and I'm sorry I don't know you, Ms. Ferris, so I, to, to say that you made a, a wrong decision, because you, you obviously have more information than I do. Uh, but I, I can tell you what I know about Coach Columbia. I, I can tell you what I know about this school system. I really think that Clark County is a wonderful place to uh, have a child, to raise a child. The school system, for all its faults, has a lot of positive things going on in it. And I feel like Coach Columbia was certainly one of those positive uh, values in the school system. I had a chance to, uh, I was uh, part of the uh, group that did a lot of filming for the school. And I had a chance to film for the football team. And Coach Columbia made sure that I was taken care of because, you know, I had to travel with the team, uh, and I want to blame him for gaining some weight because he made sure that I always uh, had, had food just like all the other football players. I'm just kidding. But uh, really, we, we have a lot of good coaches in, in this county. I see a good coach from middle school that I have. Um, and we just, we need to think about the message that it sends to the children when uh, somebody that has worked so well and is admired by so many people 15 seconds is removed from the system cut short from early from from uh, fulfilling their obligation of 30 years i just don't think that's the right thing to do thank you very much thank you the next speaker is alex crow I don't normally speak in public, and I don't like to, <laughs> but in this case I will because my best friend is Bethany Columbia, and her dad's called Columbia. Um, growing up, my parents went through a divorce, and I was at Bethany's a lot, and Mr. Columbia was always there for me at her house and even in school, and I remember him in the van taking people to football practice and home from football practice so that they got there. And I just really do not understand how can you can fire somebody and say he didn't focus on the holistic child. Because to me, if anybody, he focuses on the child as a whole, everybody, not just the football, the football team, everybody in our school, he does. And I don't understand what kind of explanation that gives. I, I want another explanation because that's not a good enough explanation for me or for anybody, I don't think, that supports him. And what kind of example are you setting to kids who know what kind of man he is, and you're saying he's not focusing on the holistic child. If anybody to me he does, he set a great example for me as a father. He's one of the best fathers I could imagine ever having. He's raised great kids, the great husband. No one could ever say a bad thing about him except for maybe you. I don't know. I mean, I don't understand. I, I don't get it. I'm not going to sit down because my time's not up. Thank you. Okay. And, and everyone's divided in here. It's like everyone's divided down the middle because half people agree with you and half the people agree with Mr. Columbia. But I just don't feel like he only had one more year left to retirement. I don't understand why not keeping him the whole year. What would have made what would 
nothing wrong with that. And I just feel like the decision of him being there 30 years 15 seconds. and someone firing him after that many years just doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm just a little confused and upset with the community. I live here. I'm a dental hygienist. I graduated on time. And I did a good job because of Mr. Columbia. And I feel like you're cutting other people short of time. Him. Thank you. The next speaker is Polly Bell. Thank you. No. Are you signed in? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Reverend Kennedy, Kennedy, do you wish to speak? We have uh, a couple of minutes left. and I've heard a lot of things said tonight. I had a son to play football at George Rogers Clark under Coach Columbia, and I'm not here. I don't want anybody else to say anything bad about him because I don't know anything bad about him. But I also hear the support. Because they made a decision. went into that decision. We can talk about good Christian man. I'm a minister. But I have all my hands in my head. We don't know what people are receiving. Thank you. This concludes the public comment period. We will have a brief recess and we will reconvene in the main boardroom at 7.20.